This is the uh, first phase of the beginning of the assembly of the uh, Joseph Newman uh, self-running electric motor uh, generator uh, that's originally founded on the technology of DC motors uh, that uh, Nikola Tesla helped develop back in the 1880s. Um, my name is James Ronnie Stater and uh, let's get to this little guy. Um, we're going to be doing two major new improvements uh, which was found in the original introduction video. If you haven't seen that you need to go back and watch that especially if you're already familiar with making the Newman motor. If you don't know what a Newman motor is or how it works or a bunch of anything I strongly advise you to stop this video now and, and go watch uh, another video about how the Newman motor works. Um, we're all in pursuit of free energy. Um, the term free energy uh, is really a catchphrase because all it implies is that once you make a generator that any electricity after that fact is free in that you don't have to write a check each month to the electric company. Um, so that's what the term free means. Free magnetic energy means um, that in case you don't know it, a lot of people don't know it, but 90 to 95 percent of the electricity generated in the entire world is done through spinning magnets and using copper wire. So when you combine uh, the motion of, of magnets and, and using copper wire, also called magnet wire, um, that's how you generate electricity. So we're not getting energy from inside the magnet. I don't know why people post that kind of nonsense. I guess that's just ignorance. Uh, people who are just uneducated about how all of this works. But uh, in no way are we trying to get any kind of energy out from inside of the, the magnet or the wire either. It's a combination of the, of the two moving together that generates the uh, electricity. Um, let's get started with this here. Uh, first thing you're going to need is some sandpaper. And um, with the sandpaper here, there's one thing that has to be taken care of. Um, on the backs, on these magnets here, these neodymium magnets, um, there is a, a coating that is non-electrical. It's not. It, it it doesn't allow electricity to flow. And we're going to need to make sure that when this magnet sticks to this rod, that it's going to be able to uh, make. Con uh, connectivity. Um, so we can't get any con connectivity without removing the paint. So what I have done on this one, I've already removed the paint so you can see it's nice and shiny. And uh, on the back side it's just black. We only need to do one end. So on this end here, I haven't done it yet this is to demonstrate. We take some sandpaper and we just sand it down. Now we have one uh, clean magnet where there's no longer a coat of paint or whatever this stuff is they put on it. And the other end I've left alone. So this end is going to be the end that's going to go on the drive shaft. Okay, so we have metal on metal. Then <clears throat> one of the things you want to do is you want to sand down your drive shaft or your axle to make sure that it's the maximum best electrical contact. Now, the first part is the assembly of the rotor, the rotor arm. So, what we want to do here, you need your, your, your one inch by two inch by one half inch neodymium magnet. This is an N52 as far as strength goes. And you want to make sure that this shiny part that we sanded down is on the inside because this is going to spin in circles. Okay, So make sure the part you just sanded down is on the inside. This is where the axis is going to go. Okay, Now what you're going to do here is you're going to take your one inch washer with your quarter inch hole in the middle and your sixteenth inch screw that's one inch in length and you want to put this little tiny washer on it first. The little tiny washer is to help with the big one quarter inch hole in the middle because the head of the screw is not all that big. Put that in here and then put that through the hole. You're going to have to have the hole centered that you've drilled in here 
And when you drill this hole in here, you have to drill it so this hole aligns with the magnet. This piece of plastic, which I cut out of Lexan, is four and a half inches by one inch across. It's sixteenth of an inch thick, but it's very, very strong, supposedly 250 times stronger than glass. Okay, now we take the magnet, making sure that the part that we sanded is going to be facing the axle. So, and then we just drop that down on top of the screw because there's a hole inside of this magnet. It's just a little over 1 16th in size. So we just drop that down. Now I'm using uh, stainless steel magnet, I mean on um, washers and, and bolts. So the magnet, the attraction of the screw and the washer to the magnet is extremely low. So it's easy to manage. So make sure you get stainless steel. It's just easier to work with. Okay, now we'll take this other piece of plastic that's also four and a half inches by one inch across. And we're going to now put this down on here. And um, as you can see, we still have a little bit of screw still sitting out. Now we're going to take another one inch washer, drop it down, put the smaller little washer down on that. And this is a locking nut. This will lock down on that without a lock washer. Okay. And we're just going to leave it finger tight for now because we still have to, we might need to be able to adjust and move this around a little bit. If it's too tight, we won't be able to. Okay. Now, what we want to do here is that we want to take the axle now, carefully, very carefully, lower it down and maybe let your fingers get in the way so it doesn't slam into the magnet. Gently put it down. If you don't do this gently, it'll jerk it right out of your hand. It'll go right into the magnet and could chip or even break your magnet. Okay, put that approximately in the middle. It doesn't have to be exact for right now. Okay, now we have to add the second the second magnet right here. Okay. To do so, we want it to be the opposite field. So, opposite polarity of, of the magnet. So, what we have here, on this top here, we have, as you can see it, south. Okay, so over here on this side, we want this to be north. Now, when you try to force this other magnet in here, it's gonna fight you. It's going to fight you real good. You got to be real, real careful that this magnet doesn't suddenly twist around on you and suddenly slam into this other magnet here. It'll happen so fast you won't know what hit you. So you got to be real careful. These are powerful little guys. Okay, so. That's north. So we're all ready to go. South, north. Okay, the both ends are the same polarity. The, um, the polarity is through the thickness and not through the length. Okay, the best and easiest way to do this is to stick the magnet down here and that, whoa, it wants to twist on you already because these magnets are so close to each other. With really grab this really firm, okay? Really grab this firm and slowly but surely start inching this across. Oh, see, oh gosh. <sighs> Let's try this again. <sighs> okay. <sighs> okay, I got it in there. Okay. But we're not out of the woods yet. This is still very dangerous right now because until we get a screw in here, anything can still happen. So you gotta keep squeezing down on these two pieces of plastic here, which is basically the housing to hold these guys in place. So let's get this other screw in here. I've got the washers already set to go. Let's put this in here. Okay. Got to get it to come out and align with this other hole on the other side. Okay. 
I'm gonna have to screw it in. Whoops. I screw this guy in here. Okay. The alignment is still off just a little bit. That's why I'm saying you didn't want to tighten the other screw down here. So you can wiggle this around and make some adjustments to so get the alignment up right. Okay, looks like I've got it right. Let's see here. It's real hard to put a metal screw onto a, a screwdriver onto a metal screw when it's in the magnet because it wants to yank your screwdriver in the wrong direction. There we go. See the screw's coming out now? The tip of the screw. There you go. It's coming out now. You can still be able to see that. Now, this is still a little bit dangerous. Whoops. Okay. Until I get this nut down on the back side, anything still could happen. Okay, and then we take the other one inch washer, we drop that down on top. Okay. And then we want to drop down this little tiny washer. And we're going to put on the lock nut. Remember, this is stainless steel, so the magnetism is very low on the attraction. So it makes this easy to manage. Now, what I've done is that I have one nut on this side, but not on this side. Then I have this nut on this side, but not here. I, I've, I have done it that way because once this thing starts spinning, uh, once it starts spinning, we have to worry about balance. So we want to make sure we have a good balance so the motor doesn't vibrate too much. Remember, this is not super scientific. Um, to make something like this on a, on a professional level, you'll need a machine shop and, and uh, you can really do some nice things in a machine shop and do it the right way. Okay, you want to push this washer over into the center. Push this one over to the center. Flip over the armature. Make sure this one's to the center. And make sure that one's to the center. Okay, let's tighten these down now. We're gonna tighten these down all the way. Um, don't over tighten, but they should be firm. <clears throat> okay, flip this over. We'll tighten this one down. <clears throat> you can see you gotta fight your screwdriver to get this on there. Okay, they're down there nice and tight. Well, there you go. There's the first part of your armature. Okay. So, that's step number one. Oh, uh, while we're here, the bushings here, uh, this is what's going to allow this to spin. We'll get more into that in phase two. But you, the bushings go on here like this. And you put your other bushing over here. And the bushings allow this to spin. So it spins freely, as you can see. Okay, that's it.